guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another AP Micro Struggle. Today I'm talking about topic 3.6, which is both a short run and a long run firm decision. Short run, whether or not to shut down or produce. Long run, whether or not to exit or enter the market. Now, like I just said, those are the only two things we're going to talk about in this video, whether or not to shut down or produce, which again is a short run decision, whether or not to enter or exit or remain in the market, which is a long run decision. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump to a specific section, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today is the shutdown or produce decision in the short run or SR. And here's the way I want to motivate the short run decision. If you live in the Northeast, you probably have a favorite local ice cream shop, that local ice cream shop, or maybe it's a cider mill, and maybe both of those things closed during the winter. And maybe you sort of wonder to yourself, why are those stores closed in the winter? And the reason they're closed in the winter is because the owner of those small ice cream shops, the owner of the apple farms and the apple cider houses say, well, it's probably not worth it to me to produce in the winter because demand isn't high enough. But I know that when I reopen back in the spring or back in the fall, I'm going to have a lot of people who come back to the cider mill, come back to the ice cream shop. So I'm just not going to produce all year. I'm only going to be open in certain months of the year. And so let's sort of analyze the economics behind that decision. So like I said, they're shutting down. They're not open during all months of the year because they simply say it's not worth it to stay open. And our job as economists is to say what in the world does it mean to say that it's not worth it to stay open? And here's what we mean. What we mean is that the price that we get for our product is less than the average variable cost. So remember, average variable cost is simply our variable cost divided by our amount of output. So the amount of ice creams we're making or the amount of cider donuts that we're selling. And remember that variable cost is the things that change with output. So that's things like how many workers I have. That's things like how many ice cream cones do I buy in order to put ice cream on top of cones? How much water do I spend watering my apple trees? All of those things vary with output. Those are all variable costs. And we just take variable costs and divide it by the number of ice creams or the number of donuts that we're selling and we get average variable cost. Also remember that the price that the consumer is paying us for those products, that's the extra revenue we get when we sell another ice cream or when we sell another donut. So that's what we also call marginal revenue because price is simply equal to marginal revenue because we're in a perfectly competitive market. We haven't talked about that yet, but if you've heard that term before, and we'll talk about that in the next video, marginal revenue comes from the fact that we're in perfect competition right now. Notice that we're using average variable cost. We're not using average total cost, which means we're not paying attention to fixed cost. Remember that fixed costs are things like the rent for my building. It could also be the fact that I need a license in order to operate a business in this town. Those are all costs that I have to pay regardless of output. So if I make zero donuts or I make 100 donuts a week, I still have to pay those same fixed costs. And in the short run, we're not worrying about those decisions. We're just saying, if I can pay enough to pay my inputs, to pay my workers, to pay all of those sorts of variable costs, if I can make that work, if I make enough money to cover those costs, then I stay open. And if I'm not going to cover those costs, then I'm going to shut down for that month. Now let's go on to the long run. And after we talk about the long run decision of enter, exit, or remain, I'll put everything together on a graph in real time. We'll sort of draw it together. And I think that'll make it even more clear. But here's the long run decision or the LR decision. And the question we're asking is, why do some businesses just leave the market? Why do some businesses shut down for good? Why do new businesses enter the market? Why is there a new restaurant that pops up in town? Why does a restaurant in town suddenly close and not reopen? And again, the basic idea here is that they can't make any money. Their profit is less than zero. And we're economists, so we need to talk about exactly what that means in terms of price and costs. So all we're saying is that price is less than their average total cost. Remember that average total cost is simply total cost divided by Q. Another thing this is saying is this is saying if I take both of these and multiply by Q, then I'm going to have PQ is less than P times average total cost. And P times Q is just revenue. And ATC times Q is just cost. So all we're saying there is profit is less than zero. Okay. And these are all equivalent ways to say that profit is less than zero. Your total revenue is less than your total cost right here. And if price is less than average total cost and price is equal to marginal revenue, then it must be the case that marginal revenue is also less than average total cost. Now, this is how you leave the market. But you can imagine if a new business wants to come in, 
They're going to look at the market. They're going to look at how many people are eating out at restaurants on a given week. They're going to think about what they can charge for their food in their restaurant. And they're going to say, well, if my price that I can charge is greater than or equal to what I think my average total cost is going to be, then it's worth it for me to jump into this market and I'm going to enter. I'm going to become the new restaurant in town. But if my price is less than my average total cost, then I'm either not going to enter the market or what's going to happen is I am going to leave the market. I am going to exit. I'm going to exit if my price is less than my average total cost. But again, if you're in the market, if price is greater than average variable cost, but price is less than average total cost, then I'm going to produce in the short run, but leave in the long run. And so again, these are two different decisions. Think about the long run. Let's just do a quick table and talk about the short run and the long run decision and sort of talk about the different possibilities for a business. So again, we'll just do this from scratch. So here's Bill. Bill is going to own his restaurant. His restaurant is going to be called Bill's Bakery. And we're trying to help Bill decide what to do in the short run or the long run. We're trying to give him a sheet of paper that he can follow. And so he can evaluate how he's doing and sort of decide what he wants to do in both the short run and the long run. So he's got two options in the short run. He's also got two options in the long run. So in the long run, we have a couple of different cases. If it's the case that price is less than average variable cost, which is obviously less than average total cost, why is average variable cost less than average total cost? Because average total cost is average variable cost plus fixed cost. So if this is true, in the short run, what should Bill do? He should shut down because he is not making enough money to cover his variable costs. That's not going to get any better. If it doesn't get any better, he should exit the market. But on the other hand, if it's the case that average variable cost is less than price, is less than average total cost, what's going to happen is that in the short run, he's going to produce because he's covering his variable costs. But in the long run, he is still going to exit because his long run profit or average total cost compared to price, his profit is still negative. So he's going to exit the market in the long run anyway. And finally, if we have average variable cost is less than average total cost is less than or equal to price, then in the short run, he's still going to produce and he's making a positive profit. So in the long run, we are going to say he remains. And you can imagine if Bill was not in this market already, he would choose to enter instead of remain because he's not yet in the market. But basically, this is Bill's decision table about what to do with his business in both the short run and the long run. Again, the short run is like a couple months. And in the long run, his timing is measured in years or many years rather than months. And finally, we're going to talk about this again in the next video. But just sort of as a preview, let's go ahead and graph what's happening. I'm just going to draw one graph in this video. So on this axis, here's Q. And here's just dollars. And remember from when we talked about cost curves, we have some marginal cost curve that looks like this. We have some average variable cost that's going to look like this, where its minimum is where average variable cost touches marginal cost. And then we're going to have a average total cost that looks something like this. So here's average total cost. And what we're saying, if this is dollar signs and we draw a couple of prices, anything in this region right here below average variable cost this is both shut down which i'm just going to call s and exit because you're not going to make any money in the long run anyway this region right here where price is below average total cost but above average variable cost this is you're going to produce but you're still going to exit and then anything above average total cost this is going to be produce and remain which I realize I'm sort of running out of room. This is the produce plus remain. And again, the key thing here is that you're looking at what the prices are compared to the average total cost and the average variable cost in order to decide what to do. So if this was confusing, drop a comment below, or if you find anything particular helpful, please let me know. And if this was overall helpful, like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.